Welcome back. It's a beautiful day in Central Park. Today is the 10th day of Nisan. Just a few days before Pesach and literally one day before the Rebbe's birthday. Tonight is the Rebbe's birthday. So we'll share a Hasidic thought. It's been a while, but we're back. Chaim Malevsky here from Chabad of the West Side. And uh, nearing Pesach, there's a question that many people ask and is on the minds of many, is that if we're such great beings and such things with such varied abilities and great capacity to communicate and emote and express ourselves in so many different ways, why is it that God wants us to do petty activities like physical activities like for example eating matzah on Pesach which is seemingly a petty one of using one of the lower abilities that we have as humans so there's great the great book called Sefer HaChinuch published by an unknown author uh, and in which he describes the um, reasons for the mitzvahs, for all the mitzvahs, some of the reasons for all the mitzvahs. Beautiful, incredible work that is highly recommended for anybody to study. So he writes over there regarding some of the mitzvahs of Pesach. We have so many mitzvahs. Like, why, why are we doing so many? So many details. And he says that he's writing seemingly to his son, because he says, Shema Bani, listen, my son. He may be talking to all of us, but it may, be, may have actually been his son. And he says, Shema Bani, listen, my son. He says, there's a great principle that Acharei HaPe'ulot Nimshachim HaLevavot that our heart follows our actions. And he says that oftentimes when a person knows where he or she is meant to be emotionally, but they're not there yet. Okay, you can imagine in relationships, in kosher relationships, between husband and wife, or parents and children, or friends. And our heart, our mind knows, but our heart is not there yet. So he says, just do it. Do the action and your feelings will follow. Your heart will follow. Do the good deed. Your heart will follow. I know there was a famous story that somebody once asked the Rebbe. Um, she says that she, said that she, had, she had a hard time being nice to her friends in some way. And the Rebbe said, when you're at the Shabbos table, pass the salt. Just pass the salt. Pass the salt to everybody. Just do, do the action and your heart will follow. So the Sefer HaChinuch writes that when we do an action, it triggers something in our heart. And so too it follows that when on Pesach, the goal seemingly, according to this logic, is for us to connect with God in a strong way with our heart and with our mind. And one of the triggers, one of the ways we get there is by doing the physical activity of eating matzah. So when you eat matzah, it triggers your mind to awaken, your mind to meditate upon the great miracles that God caused for the Jewish people. This creates a love in our heart and in turn connects us to God in a stronger way and strengthens our faith and strengthens our commitment to God. That's all true and beautiful, but there's more. It's deeper than that. Because in this paradigm, hi, in this paradigm, seemingly, the matzah is a tool and a trigger to get to a higher place, which is the feelings and the emotions and the internal connection with God. 
So, as tonight is Yud Aleph Nisan, the Rebbe's birthday, and it's the day that we celebrate the Rebbe's life and achievements and effect on us, and also re-evaluate and recommit ourselves to his teachings. One of the Rebbe's teachings was to study Hasidus, to learn Hasidus, where Hasidus helps bring a light, a warmth, enthusiasm into the mitzvahs. And I like to say that people, Jews who are completely observant and perform all the mitzvahs, will not only observe and perform after learning Hasidus, but also internalize their connection with the mitzvah. So we're going to dive into a, a thought over here from Hasidus about eating matzah on Pesach. So this is, comes from the uh, Maimar, a Hasidic discourse from the Alter Rebbe. And the Alter Rebbe was the first Chabad Rebbe. He wrote this in 1803, I'm pretty sure. And so a few short points of the Maimar is as follows. It says that in the hierarchy of creation, Kabbalah teaches us the mystical view of the world. There are four elements in creation. I'm going to start from the bottom up. There's domain, which is the mineral. There's someach, which is plant. Chai, which is animal, all living beings. And medaber, which is the fourth one, which are the humans. And seemingly we are at the top of, like obviously we're at the top of, of, the, of the line of creation. So he asks the question, if we're at the top of the line of creation and all of those are below us, why is it that human beings need and rely on the other levels of creation in order to sustain ourselves? We need food, which comes from the mineral, the plant, and the animal, if you're not, veg if you're not vegetarian. If you're vegetarian, you're eating mineral and plant. Why is it that we, the highest level of creation, the Midaber, humans, need and rely on the lower levels of creation? And he says something based on the Arizal, which is fascinating. Arizal is a Kabbalist and expanded upon this idea. And he said that there's a Pasuk, a verse in the Torah that says, levado adam. It is not on the bread alone that man lives. But it's actually she's got a call which God lives and that which comes out of, God, of God's mouth meaning everything in this world is created by what we call the Asara Mamarot the ten utterances right there in the story of creation and God said let there be this, that and the other and he says as follows he says that which gives us power and sustains us is not just the physical bread it's actually the spirit of god that is within that bread or that food or that animal or that mineral and he goes on to explain and he says a beautiful thing i'm going to try to demonstrate here with my fingers so before we said that the lowest level was the inanimate then there is the plant then there's the animal then there's the human and he says that in the source of things they're reversed, so they go like this. So in the source of things, that the way God created the world, the higher the thing is, the lower it is when it comes down. So the higher the root of something, the lower it is when it reaches our world. So here in our world, we're at the top of creation, but in the source, in the root, we're at the bottom of the root of creation in a chain of evolution, a mystical evolution of God's creating this world. The things that were created first come from the highest place. And in the creation, in the story of creation in Beratius and Genesis, man was created last. So it's not only in time, but also in spirit, in root, in the source. So because of that, those elements below us, the animal, the plant, and the mineral, all are rooted in a source within God that is above us. 
and therefore they sustain us and therefore we need them and another part of this is that they need us because we help them help raise them sublimate them to where they belong to but that's a different story so now we understand why we need food and that food the lower levels of creation actually help us the human beings use the most refined features that we have our thoughts our feelings our emotions our cognitive abilities our mind you can't think without you can't study you can't analyze things without food so it's those lower levels of creation that are giving life and sustaining fueling the really refined aspects of our human uh, abilities now we'll take it one step further here's where it gets exciting and here's how it's related to Pesach and to matzah matzah aside from being food physical food it also has another characteristic which is above and beyond everything we spoke about until now and that is that the Jewish people ate matzah on the way out of Egypt at God's command and it says at that time God revealed himself to the Jewish people as it never was before ani velo acher i alone revealed myself says god ani alone melech malach melech makadosh baruch hu god himself revealed himself to the jewish people and the bread that we eat the matzah that we eat is imbued with that spirit of godliness and it created with us a faith an amuna a trust a faith in god that is beyond any human capacity here's our we rise above the regular human and we talk about a jewish element that we have which is our faith in god a strong faith in god and that matza that we experience at that time had that faith had that visual experience it said we said zekeli van veu this is my god we said this is my god we didn't say oh i i learned about god we said this is my god we virtually saw god that experience is invested in the matzah that we eat today at the pesach seder on the first night when you eat matzah next this coming friday night or any time that it's going to be pesach on the first night of pesach wherever you are if you eat it with a bracha with the proper intentions you will be accessing that spirit that faith you're eating godliness you're eating raw godliness raw faith and it actually strengthens our faith when we eat matzah so matzah aside from being a physical food that sustains us wheat and water it also contains in it the element of pure faith in god that keeps us going for the rest of the year that's the story of the matzah we also see another part of it is that it's characteristic of the physical properties of matzah and chametz the difference between matzah and chametz is that chametz bread is inflated and that represents arrogance and ego and matzah is flat representing bitul humility in order for somebody to truly believe and connect with god they need to remove all the arrogance deflate themselves and be completely bitul humble and arrogant and non-arrogant and surrender themselves to god so that we see that in the physical properties uh, the difference between chametz and matzah too so to wrap this all up we have the matzah that we're going to eat on pesach night is not just a trigger to get our hearts our minds to think about the miracles that god created for us and to awaken our emotions to god but it's actually we're eating faith we're eating godliness and that aspect is also in all the mitzvot that we have where god invested his will his ratzon into the physical attribute of the mitzvah not just the spirit but actual the action the action the lowest action reaches the highest place within god and our connection to him as a result make sure you have handmade 
Shemur Matzah for this year's Pesach. And as the Rebbe every year begged and urged us to make sure that all of our friends and neighbors, anybody whom we know, should have a little bit of that, at least a little bit, of that handmade Shemur Matzah for the night of the Seder. You can always reach out to your local Chabad, wherever you are, if you don't have access to it, to the matzah yourself. And also let them know where your friends are. And any friends that don't have matzah would be glad to help. God bless you. If you can get to the Rebbe's Ohel if you're lo local, go to the Ohel, go to visit the Rebbe's holy resting site, and be blessed. And now I'm going up to the big hill. This is called the Big Hill, the Central Park. Turn it around for a little bit so you can see it. And we're moving on. <sighs> Could be worse. <laughs>